All right, so this is going to be my first ever screen recording, so please bear with me if it's not very polished. So this is about how to convert a data file from the wide format, like this one here, to a long format. So wide format is useful when you want to run, for example, repeated measures ANOVA. So here in this example, you have 3x3 three three ANOVA that you want to run with it. It's actually easier to explain in the long format, where each person was exposed to nine different combinations of conditions, three drinks, beer, wine, and water, and three different kinds of imagery, attractive, a corpse, so not very attractive, and a TV, which was supposed to be neutral. And the question was whether the imagery could affect the rating of the drink. So the rating's here in the last column. Now, in order to run uh, repeated measures ANOVA, you have to basically use, for unknown reasons, this so-called wide format, where each participant is one line. So basically you have to recode this into uh, the labels of the different columns here. Now let's assume we start with this. How do you create a data plot that actually shows the error bars, like this one here? Just the simple plots you get from the SPSS ANOVA, repeated measures ANOVA, doesn't really do the trick. So you basically have to convert this wide format into a long format. And there might also be various other reasons to do so. So how to do that? Basically, you can go into the data, the restructure uh, module here. And this is probably not the best explanation here how to really do this, so uh, I'll try and explain and guide you through this. So you click continue because you want to convert from the wide to the long format, and the opposite would be from the long to the wide format, but that might be another video. So we have basically one variable here. We have only uh, ratings, so that's one dependent variable, although we have uh, nine different, so three by three different factor combinations. So the case number, that's actually the participant number here, so the one that uh, were, which basically tells which line means what. And the variable to be transposed or changed basically, that's our dependent variable here, so that's the rating. And what we have here is basically nine different conditions, so three by three, we can continue now. And we basically want to create two different uh, variables because, uh, so that's kind of the independent factor we'd like to create. So we'd like to create uh, one column for drinks and one for imagery. So basically SPSS has to kind of tease apart the different conditions into t these two different values and that's how we tell it. So if it would be a, a three-way ANOVA, that would be three, a two-way one, and if it's just a one-way ANOVA, you can just use this one. But here we have a two, uh, three by three, so a two-way ANOVA. So what you have here is the index name. So the first one here is basically beer, beer, beer. So this is the first one here. That's kind of the drink type. And the second one is, let's call it imagery. And each of them has three levels. We're not going to care about label here, but you could add more fancy labels than this. But drink and imagery is fine for me right now. And Here's a question what you do with all the other variables, if there would be any additional ones, and we could just keep them as fixed variables, so they would just be taken over in the conversion from wide to long format. And let's try this out. So if you restructure the data now, we basically lose the original data file if you save it, so make sure you have a backup of the original one. Uh, usual warning signal, and what you have now is data file that kind of looks like the one we want, but basically doesn't have all the labels, so it just converted to one, two, and so on. So that's not super useful, so you can go into variable view and basically start labeling things here. So here obviously you really need to watch out. Where is it? Um, doesn't look the way I want it. We should be able to assign oh, values. Huh. Um, still getting used to the interface. So basically, what you do here is, is say, well, if it's a one, what I really mean, this is a beer. So a one should be called a beer to just make the analysis simpler. Two, that was one. And so basically, make sure that this really corresponds exactly to 
what you have in the data file. So this is where you'd like to go back to the uh, original data file and really double check that this is the right values. So for example, here's just a, oh, that's the wrong one. So basically you need to reopen the original data file and see that this is really exactly what you want to do. I already have this created, so I know this is what it should be, but really make sure you don't make any errors here because otherwise uh, well, your whole labeling goes wrong. And you can do the same with the other variable, the imagery. So imagery could be a tractor. So a two corresponds to the corpse, so not very attractive for most people. And three would correspond to the T, which is supposed to be neutral, well, maybe. So what you have here is basically a file that is actually a lot more readable. And what you can do now easily is just create the kind of graphs you'd like to. For example, uh, for interaction, the line plot is typically the easiest. You can uh, plot on the y-axis the rating and have drink on one side. Okay. And imagery for different colors. And now finally you can use error bars. Confidence intervals is the one you'll most likely use. That's also what APA standards recommend nowadays. So if you click OK, you should get a data plot that kind of looks OK. And something went wrong with the plotting with the error bars. So typically, if you go in there again, you should get the same dialog. Oh, OK, clicked maybe once too often. Apply. This is only a preview for unknown reasons. I'm not sure why SpaceX can't really directly operate the data and show you how it'll look like. That would be useful, but uh, that's not what SPSS does. So, and there we go. And by double clicking, you can, as usual, modify the image as you'd like. All right, so this is a short summary on how to convert from a wide to a long data format. And in the next video, we'll show